I'm Brian Furman. Uh, I'm from uh, Black Hills Information Security, that is Bright. Um, and today I'm going to be introducing uh, a tool that I've been working on called Powerline. Uh, this is still a work in progress, uh, but I do have some, some cool things I think I can share with you guys, uh, just kind of show you the general um, concept of what I'm going for here, and then maybe get some feedback from you guys towards the end of this. Is this volume okay? Seems like I'm really loud. <laughs> a little loud. All right. Let's, let's move it down a notch. Is that better? Okay, cool. I talk really loud anyway, so I don't think that the mic is going to do a lot of favors. All right, uh, so just a quick overview. Um, Got to have your classic meme there. Uh, basically, what I've created is another utility that can help us call some different PowerShell scripts. So, you know, PowerShell, pretty, pretty popular in the pen testing world these days. And it's, it's another tool that we got written in C Sharp. And the nice thing about it is that it's, we can call PowerShell without actually using the PowerShell EXE itself. One of the reasons for this is we're, we're seeing a lot more and more logging of PowerShell, a lot more blocking of it, and a lot of things that are kind of uh, slowing down the use of, of these scripts during the pen testing phases. And what I'm working for here is a tool that can be used purely from the command line. I'll talk about some of the other tools that are out there. Some of you are probably thinking right now, like, oh, but there's other tools that do this. Correct. There is a novelty here, though, which is being able to use this purely from the command line and through a remote sessions, such as through Meterpreter, through Empire, and, and other channels that you might want to use. Another thing that I built into this, using uh, some, some other people's um, methods of, of bypassing whitelisting, such as especially Casey Smith, Sub T. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with his work. If not, fantastic dude. You have to check him out if you haven't seen him before. And so we built some of that stuff into this. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Classic overview, I don't know. Security something or another, insert whatever you want, analyst, researcher, whatever. Degrees and things, nobody really cares about it. There's my wife, it's a, <laughs> I put this picture in, I was going through to find a picture of her. I found this one, it's uh, me, our dog, and me with the gun. So she asked me, she said, do you want to go Christmas tree hunting? And I'm sitting there working at my computer, and I pause, and I said, sure, but can I shoot the tree? So after a little bit of humming and hawing, she thinks, and she's like, Okay, get your gun, let's go. <laughs> and a couple hours later, there we are with our tree, our dog, and everything else. Cat video enthusiast, so if you have any cool cat videos, send them my way. I always appreciate them. All right, PowerShell. Just talk about it a little bit. Why do we care about this so much? Uh, you know, of course, it offers a lot of, lot of goodies that, that we can use, both for legitimate purpose, purposes as a system administrator, but also as pen testers. Offers a lot of really good stuff since it deals um, you know, directly with uh, the underlying Windows architecture itself. It allows for a lot of network-based calls, a lot of administrative things, which again can be used both by system administrators and by testers. Basically, Windows 7 Plus, it's already going to be there. So if you hop on one of those systems, unless it's been disabled, you can assume it's probably there in some way, shape, or form. Anybody who's never used it before, I feel it's, some people might disagree with me on this, but I feel it's a bit reminiscent of Python in the way that you use it, at least in the usability, some of the syntax. Um, I know some people are probably liking it more to Perl, but whatever. It's, uh, either way, it's got some good usability and a lot of power, um, all pun intended. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, it, it really is becoming the go-to for attackers. If, if you just search around pen testing type stuff now on Google, wherever, you're probably going to come across PowerShell scripts. I mean, it seems like every single day, there's a, nearly, there's a new PowerShell script to do something, to do some kind of pen testing thing, um, or to do some kind of system administrative task. And people are catching on to this. And they're starting to, uh, to put in different blocking methods or alerting methods, so maybe they'll um, they'll just block uh, PowerShell from being run altogether. They'll just remove it from the system. Maybe they won't block it, but they'll put in an alert. So you run some, you run a couple PowerShell commands, and suddenly uh, FireEye is generating alerts. Suddenly, some other product that you're using is generating an alert. Um, so we are seeing some more AV products that are doing inspection of scripts themselves rather than completely disabling it, not allowing it. They'll allow some scripts, but they do static analysis that look for things such as. Um, they, they look through the comment headers, so they look to see is a particular person's name in these comment headers, like Matt Graber, <laughs> Will Schroeder, <laughs> people are familiar with that. Look for these types of things, looking for function names, doing a lot of static analysis. I haven't seen a whole lot of behavioral type analysis on the script yet, so seeing products actually run these through sandboxes, but I'm sure we'll see that pop up more and more. 
And so basically the bottom line here is that we are starting to see that, you know, we've, we've had it good as pen testers for a little while being able to just run these things. Attackers have been able to just go freely with these things. But now companies are catching on. They're starting to try to stop this activity, which is fantastic. So what are some of the bypasses for this? Um, really, with PowerShell, it's, it's just another front end for the .NET framework. Really, what we're dealing with here is a system management automation DLL in the background. PowerShell is basically just a way to, to interact with that type of framework, the .NET framework. And if we use something like C Sharp, rather than going through the PowerShell venue, we can actually just call system management automation DLL directly. So if you're using C Sharp to run PowerShell type commands, and you can actually use call full-blown scripts, as we'll see in the C Sharp programs, it doesn't actually show up that you're running PowerShell. So you can run these programs, you can run these scripts, pull up Task Manager, you don't see it. You don't see PowerShell in there at all. That's because it's not actually using PowerShell, even though you're using full-blown PowerShell scripts within the C Sharp program, because you're interfacing directly with that system management automation DLL. So what are some of the existing tools? I can find a very good meme, so it's bullshit. Um, we have PS Attack and, and uh, Power Ops. Both are pretty similar in what they're doing. So with both of these, uh, you basically have a C Sharp wrapper that is wrapping up these PowerShell scripts, allowing you to run them as, run, allowing you to call an executable and basically run these scripts through the executable, which again is not actually calling PowerShell, it's calling System Management Automation DLL and can allow you to get around some of the logging get around some of the other blocking things that might be in place. These are both, oh, hey CJ. <laughs> These are both fantastic um, tools. And, uh, but, but the one thing that they are missing is that, did you, did you come up to hit my, hit my stuff? Okay. I can, I can just hit it. Next. Next. All right. <laughs> the one thing that they are missing though is that neither of them can be run via Meterpreter or Empire session. And so if, if you go out right now, you try this out, so try, spawn up your interpreter session. I'll actually just show you guys if you don't want to try it. Try to run something like PS Attack or Power Ops. You'll see that you're, it's actually going to crash. It's not going to run. You're dead in the water if that's what you're trying to do. And so say that you've got a session. You've got a session on a computer through some other means. You weren't using PowerShell. But you have a session on a computer. You want to start running some of these scripts, but you find that PowerShell's blocked, that they're, that they're monitoring. But you still want to use these. Well, I wrote a tool that will allow you to actually do this. Again, it is very similar to these other ones, but it allows you to use it via command line, remotely, through, um, through these types of, of venues. So let's go ahead and let's uh, move on, talk about that a bit more. With some live demos. <laughs> so I went through these. It's always exciting. I say that uh, here it's 60%. I think we have about 80 to 90% of the demos seem to be working. Let's hope that number stays the same. Everyone ready? <laughs> All right, so basically I've just got two VMs that I'm running here. I've got a, a Windows VM and I've got a Kali VM. I have a bunch of stuff on here right now. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a lot of this in a little bit, some of these extra things that are on there, some of these extra goodies, but for now, Top over to Cali. Select, close. Is that okay? No, probably a little bit bigger. Let's try 24. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna use MSF Venom. I'm gonna go ahead and generate up the payload. Need 79, top over here, 79.
Thank you. 128, 480. Yes, I am using a PowerShell one, but that's just so we don't have to fight around with it because I didn't try any of the other formats and I don't want things to go wrong. So here we are. All right, generate that up. Just center payload, nothing fancy. Invalid payload selected. Is it CMD? Oh, because I did uh, the dash P instead of the dash F. That helps. Cool, so generate up a payload. Now let's go ahead and let's uh, spawn up a listener. I like the background music. It's not quite so silent. Yep, exactly. All right, so I've got a payload, I've got a listener. Let's go ahead and serve it up. Yeah, that is... <laughs> Stand in the doorway. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and download this. All right, so got my payload. Let's go ahead and run it. Yay, session. Demo over. All right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and interact. Cool. All right, and so at this point, I have a couple files that are already preloaded. So over here, you can see my powerline.exe program that I put over here. I also put PS Attack over here, um, and a couple other things. So now I just need to upload them to my target. Let's upload both of them. Whoops. Okay, upload that. And let's upload. Cool. All right, so we've got both of those uploaded. Now let's go ahead and shell. Okay. See, so you've uploaded Powerline, PS Attack, Power Stripper, which is there on purpose. We'll look at that one later. Terrible name, I should probably change it. <laughs> Everyone's learning like, oh, he messed up. No. All right. Um, so let's try and run PS attack. Going, going, going. Done? I don't know. Something happened. Yeah, it's the earthquake. All right, but anyways, um, oh yeah, I'm pretty so pretty sure it crashed. So we head over here. Yep, there it is. So fortunately, again, fantastic tool. I'm not trying to knock on this tool. I'm not trying to knock on the other tools. I'm purely just showing that if you if you want to use these tools and you try to run them via interpreter, some other kind of remote thing, they're not going to work. It's going to crash. They're not set up to do this. Yes, yes, this is intentionally supposed to break. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Demo sucks. All right. Close program. And they should still have my session. Yep, so there's the error out. And so if you're running it, if you were running this remotely, you'd be thinking, like, oh, what happened? And 
maybe eventually the person who, um, who's actually controlling the desktop will get the error and they're like, oh, what is this? Well, okay, whatever, I'll just close it, move along. Windows, things happen. All right, next I'll try running Powerline. Okay, cool, we got some feedback back here. Feedback back, all right, so please provide at least a script name, typical usage, it gives you some usage uh, scenario, sir. So if you're not quite sure what to do, do Powerline, show scripts. All right, cool. So this will show us some of the different scripts that we have available. So I've got a domain password spray, is written by Bo Bullock of our company. It's an awesome utility. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It is sweet. Uh, GPP password, which I'm sure some of you have seen. Cats, it's actually Mimi Cats. I just shortened it up. I mean, you can, we can call these things whatever we want when we go and we look at them here in a little bit. Uh, Kerberos, Mail Sniper, also written by Bo Bullock. Power Up, Power Up, SQL. A couple other things. All right, let's try one. So let's try Power Up. So the way this works, basically, is that you call powerline.exe and then you tell it what script you want to import. So those of you that are familiar with PowerShell, who play around with PowerShell, it's very similar to the import module command at this point. So if you have a giant script, your script has a bunch of functions in it, before you can use those functions, you need to import them. So typically you do import module your script name. That's basically what we're gonna do at this point. And so do, let's do um, power up. Okay. So basically at this point, all I've said is import, import the module, power up, and so now all those functions are going to be available to me. What do I do now? I tell it what functions I want to run. In this case, invoke all checks. So those of you familiar with the power up script, you've probably run this one before. And so all this is going to do is it's going to search the system. This is the remote system that I have a set, on which I have a session. It's going to search that system for potential vulnerabilities that can allow me to escalate up. If this person happens to not be a local administrator, this will search for common misconfigurations, other issues on the systems that might, be, that might allow for me to become a local administrator. In this case, the user is already a local administrator, but we're going to run it anyways. Enter, tells you what she ran, and now it's going to go ahead and it's going to run that script. And so again, those of you who have run this before, I'm sure this uh, will look pretty familiar to you. And it actually gives you the feedback in real time. I've got it set up so that it will spit the commands, or spit the output back to you as it runs, rather than waiting for everything to finish, bundling it up, and then sending it back, which can be a little bit worrisome when you kick something off like this and it takes 30 minutes to run, and you're wondering, is it still running? Did it crash? What's happening? You don't have to worry about that here. It'll actually just uh, give, give you the output as it gets it. And so, so that's cool. Um, let's, say, what do, let's say we wanted to run this and we wanted to save it to a file as well. So, it is getting crazy up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another cool feature is that at this point you can actually run basically any PowerShell command that you would want to run. So, so let's, I feel like the people under the chandelier are getting a little worried. So let's, let's go ahead and let's run this and then let's do something like uh, T it out, T it out to a file. So let's do T object dash F, I don't know, my test on txt. Let's go ahead and run it. And the T command actually still works here too. So as it's spitting, putting the output to the console, it, you'll get that back and it'll write it out to a file as well too. You know, there might be, might be a couple of cases where you want to use that. You want to save this. You should run it a couple times, a couple different users on a couple different machines, um, especially for some of the other scripts. Wait for this to finish. And there's my file. Yes. Can I run this through bail? Uh, run my exe through bail? Um, any so pretty much any um, executable, anything that would you would normally use for upstating executables, if it will work on that, it should work on this. Should. <laughs> let's let's put it. Let's put italics. Yes. 
very good point, which I'm going to get to towards the end. Um, but that is that is a great question. Oh yeah, and if you guys have any other questions or input as I'm going, feel free to just spit them out. You don't have to save them towards the end. We can make this an open discussion type thing. So just stop me. It's fine. Um, so all the ones that are built into to PowerShell itself, um, it will be able to call them because uh, so basically, as as I mentioned, as soon as you're at pretty much as soon as you're at this point, you can call pretty much whatever PowerShell type stuff you would want to, because um, pretty much all I'm doing is I, I just tell it. The, the way that it works, and we can kind of go through the code, and this is all open source too. I have this all out on GitHub. I'll give you guys the GitHub repos at the end of the talk. And you guys can go out and grab this, just tear me apart um, on, on things that I did horribly wrong. That's fine, I love that feedback. There's not a whole lot of comments in there, uh, which I'm notorious for, but there also isn't a ton of code, so. Um, but no, 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 so uh, at this point, um, basically all, all it's done is it's just, it's going to pull this script into the pipeline, into the, um, the pipeline that's going on in C-sharp. And then from here, you don't even actually have to run anything within the script. So I could do something like, I don't know, write output. And it'll do that. So if you wanted to, you can kind of cheat a little bit. Maybe I'll put in something else um, here like a, as a placeholder so that you don't have to actually import the script. That's just kind of ha of a hack at this point, but pretty much here you could put in whatever PowerShell call. <laughs> oh, how well do I sync with that? Um, so right now you have to go out and you have to grab it down and, and put it in yourself, which, which I'll show you, um, but it, Eventually, definitely, yeah, we want something so that it'll go ahead and it'll sync up to whatever repos you have, similar to what PS Attack does right now, which will go out, it'll go out to hit GitHub, it'll pull down all the latest stuff, put it in, just cool stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely all cool features again, which I'll talk about more towards, um, kind of at a couple slides towards the end. Um, but again, this is just kind of general proof of concept that, um, and it's something else I just wanted to chat about too, whether or not this should really be a standalone tool or just try to incorporate this functionality in the existing tools, which also have some of the cool stuff like being able to encrypt the scripts, um, being able to basically, you have, with PS Attack, you essentially have a program that is used to write a program <laughs> so that so that the, the, um, the offset guys don't catch up and all that good stuff. Yep, good question. Anyone else, any, any other feedback, anything else you could think of? For moving forward. Yeah, cool. Cool stuff. All right, um, here's another one that's kind of fun. So when I was mentioning before that 80 to 90% of the demos are working, I have proc dump in here, the PowerShell version of the proc dump script. I had it working before I came here. For whatever reason, it's not working now. That's okay, We can. I can still show you the, the cooler part, which is Mimikatz running through here. Um, which you can run through here once you have a dump of a file. So what I did is I just manually dumped out my LSAS process on my Windows machine using Task Manager. You can see LSAS.dump. Um, the command to do this, I'm gonna be honest, is a bit hellacious, but I do have it documented. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it over here. All right. So here, I'm gonna call Powerline Mimikatz, invoke Mimikatz. Um, after much trial and error, um, I figured out how to do this via the, the PowerShell version of this. Um, it basically came down to escaping hell, um, but we got the, got the quotes here, the escaping all correctly. If I have everything down here right, it should, it should go okay. Everyone cross fingers. Yes, all right, there it is. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, so um, yeah, so at that point, if you have LSAS already dumped uh, wherever and you, you have that file, you can now run Mimikatz locally against that rather than putting it into memory, scraping memory, which is going to set off all kinds of alarms on most systems that you're playing around with. 
Um, but there it is. Here's the password. Um, if anyone wants to try to log into my computer really quickly, that's not my host password. It's DM. But. Yep, I'm still an interpreter. Oh, the, the Mimikatz, or Meterpreter's Mimikatz version? No, no, Meterpreter itself. Okay. Yep, yeah, yeah. So um, so this is still in Meterpreter, um, but you don't actually have to use this in Meterpreter. This is just the example I'm using here. You could use it via any C2 channel that you want to. So basically, anything that gives you a command line on that computer, you can use that to run this. And that's kind of one of the cool things that I was going for with this. So, I mean, if you're using even probably just Netcat, um, if you spawn up a Netcat listener, you could use this if you're using Empire. Uh, whatever, whatever your C2 channel of preference is, you can, you can use that to run this tool. Command line access is all you need. Yeah. Yep. 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 Ex exactly. This was. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yep. Uh, so the qu the question was um, the original question was if I'm still in a interpreter session here. Um, yes, yeah, still in a interpreter session. Um, you heard my response, and then he you're just commenting that uh, a lot of the um, basically a, a lot of different uh, monitoring tools, AB tools, are starting to catch people running things via just looking for uh, the encoded command in PowerShell being used, the dash ENC or other things like that, which Yep, it's true. Uh, so they're putting in a lot of these, what I would call just quick fixes, which are good, but then we're seeing more and more other ways around it, um, such as is it the, like the in invoke obfuscation and other types of tools that will uh, that will go through and play a bunch of tricks that will try to get around those static analysis type things. Yep. Good point. Um, all right, uh, so another thing that I mentioned is that you can run this, you can run the, uh, the power line uh, utility with some of the application whitelisting bypass methods. So say that you've got a shell on the computer uh, that was able to get around those methods. Now you want to run some additional executables, um, something else on, on their system to try to get around that. One of the methods that you can use is one that was developed by Casey Smith, sub T, uh, that uses the install util method. It's a built-in utility to, in, Windows, basically the way that it works is it runs your C Sharp executable in a slightly different way than, than most of the, the applications run. So most applications, you, you run them, it goes into the main function, and then it continues on. But this one, it's a little bit different. It has a different entry point, and it can, it can get around some of the application whitelisting utilities that are out there. And so I also have this documented, but I just want to show you guys real quick. So I don't have application whitelisting on this computer, so unfortunately I can't show it blocked and not working, but I have seen this work in production before myself. I have made this work in production before. <laughs> I've used it to bypass whitelisting. There we go. So basically, uh, it's going to be hard to see, but I've got... Okay, I'm just going to paste this in over here. All right, so if you dig around in the Windows directories, so the, the default, I'd mentioned that PowerShell comes installed by default in Windows 7 Plus. The directories that are going to be there, depending on your architecture, if you're on a 64-bit architecture, this one will be there in addition to the folder that's, that's labeled framework without the 64. But you can go through just a series of folders you have to traverse through. But you'll find this install util should be there. And you can use that to actually run this program. Instead of running it directly,
Okay. So what I've done here is I used it to run my Powerline ANC program. What that does is it runs it through an installation process, which again causes it to execute in a different manner than how it would execute if you were to just double click on it, than how it executed when we were just running it before. The, the one catch though is that whatever you want it to run, uh, you actually need to put that inside of a little script here. There's a slight bug. But. All right, so I'm just going to have it do the dash show scripts. I'm going to do exit. I'm going to upload. Okay. Drop back into shell. Run it. And it runs my command there. So just another, another thing that's built into it, the application whitelisting bypass type stuff. Um, so again, that's a trusted utility. The install utility is a trusted utility. Um, most of the application whitelisting stuff is not going to deny the use of install util.exe. Um, there's also csc.exe, which is the utility on Windows that is used to compile C Sharp programs. So in many cases we've seen where people have application whitelisting in place, they, st they still have csc.exe whitelisted, they still have install util.exe whitelisted. And the way that some of these work is that once you kick off that install uh, exe um, utility, that utility is trusted. The process that it then goes through to actually execute your program does not go through the same process as other programs when they're being checked by the application whitelisting utility. So that install util is trusted, kicks off this program in a way that executes it slightly different. What's that? Um, so the uh, the question was, is the install utility code sign? Um, yes, that is actually, that's a Microsoft utility. Yep. And so just to show what that looks like, so here, typically when you double click the program, I can't really zoom in. Can you guys see that in the back? A little bit small, a little bit blurry. Yes, good, okay, cool. So that's a normal entry point. We're gonna, I'm gonna break out the magnifying glass. Uh. Oh, that's good, okay. So there's a normal entry point to the program. Here I'm checking out the arguments, um, a couple other things. I then go ahead and I hide the window, and then I jump into my main portion of the code, my code.start here. Go down, right there. When you run it through the installer, there's this, there's this special function here that it looks for instead of the main function. So when you run it through the install, this is where it actually hops in. Here it's called uninstall. You can do it either way. You just have to specify a flag. This is just the way that ended up setting it up, but it works the same way. So you run it with the, that install utility. It then hops in through here, goes through this installation process, which then causes your uh, causes the program to, to run. Um, nope, that should it's probably good. Cool. Yeah. This still happen. <laughs> hmm, interesting. All right, um, so right now, so that's the main things I wanted to show you in terms of functionality for Powerline. Um, the next thing I wanted to show is just how you could add in your own scripts if you'd like to. For right now, we'll make this better at some point. For right now, if you want to add in your own scripts, go out to, go out to GitHub, grab down the Powerline repo and also grab down this power stripper repo. An intern helped me work on this. Help me get, uh, get some of this other extra functionality in here working. It's, it's a pretty basic program, but basically what it boils down to is that within the power line program, you have this file called functions. Hmm. 
I've already added it in here. What are you doing? Use the other one. You already up? Okay, there you go. There we go. All right. So here are our functions uh, within the functions file. So we got hidden up here. There we go. So we got this functions file, and here's where we actually add in new functions that we want to. Uh, the way that you do it. Whoa! Blow my mind. Magnifier on magnifier. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. All right. All right, so here we've got our, our functions add, uh, where we're going to add in our, our um, if you want to add in new functions to this, that's perfect. Excellent. Let's move that. Okay, cool. So the first argument that you do is you, that's how you want it to show up in the program. So when we were looking at it earlier when I was talking about the basic import module, something similar to import module, that's what the name is going to be called. Um, what, what you want your script to be called in the context of the Powerline program. The next argument to this is going to be the Base64 encoded version of that script. Now you could go out, you could use another utility to Base64 encode it if you'd like to. That's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to have a way that you could easily strip out all the comments from the scripts because you, you likely don't need to have the comments in there. It's just extra wasted space, or extra space um, going to add extra size to your program. And if for some of the utilities that I was mentioning that we'll go through and we'll try to look at things such as function headers, um, we have seen that where, where some aren't even looking at the function names, they're just looking at the function headers themselves for uh, trying to detect is this malicious or not. They might do some kind of inspection to find that in here, which again, we can fix at some point with, uh, with an encryption type method, uh, or like encryption key, you know, whatever. But for now, go ahead and strip all that out and create a base64 encoded version of your script. Okay, so let's show that. So here I just have a stupid little script that I put together. Like, hey, some crazy comments, and all it does is it writes output just says, hey, what's up? So here's Power Stripper. So to use it, all you do, grab your script, drag it, drop it, and it'll create two new files for you. One is still going to be a Power, it's going to be a non-encoded version, but it has all the comments stripped out. So if you have script, you don't want to use the program, but you just want to strip out all the comments quickly, cleanly, you could use that for this. Use this for that. Yes, Hamels, that's what my intern helped me out with, because I, I had it close, but not quite working. You're just like, no, 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 you just have to do this. Do, 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 done. <laughs> Thank you, you are the best. <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Got free food that day. Oh, sorry. So, so the uh, um, repeating the question. The question was, does it handle comment blocks to blocks of comments within there? The answer is yes. And the other file is just the base64 encoded version. So I'm going to hop in here. I'm going to do funks.add. Call it cool new funk. Let's give it with a K for the awesome funk that's going on upstairs. <laughs> All right, toss it in, save it. Okay, it looks like it build succeeded. Output as source repos power line. Okay. 
All right, so I'm just going to grab the executable. Copy, replace. So rather than re-uploading it, I just put the new executable out there. We can go back over here. We can do power line. You can see our function's been added. There it is, cool new funk. And of course to run it. And so we don't need any additional arguments for this one because it doesn't actually have any functions. All it's going to do is it's going to load the script and when it loads the script, it's going to cause it to run. So we do that, our script runs, there it is. All right, um, so that's that's pretty much um, everything I wanted to show you guys with it. Of course, um, it, like I said, it is a it is still a work in progress, uh, but the, the general concept is there. So you need to add some some cool new features, but I'm still kind of at a, at a cross point here. If I really want to have this be a standalone tool, or if we want to try to work with some of the other tools to to merge them in, or to merge it in with some of the existing tools, either PS Attack or Power Ops. Um, both are, both are good tools, both have their own kind of pros and cons. So if you guys have um, ideas on that, if something, I don't know, anything that, kind of your suggestions on it, would you rather have this be a standalone tool? Would you rather have it merge in with existing frameworks? I guess just reach out to me um, with, with your thoughts. We can take like an online vote or, some, vote or something. I don't know, something like that. Uh, but either way, I would like to get this functionality out there because I do think it's very useful to be able to run these scripts remotely through whatever C2 session that you like, whatever your, your preference is, without having to run the PowerShell scripts directly, so without having to run them using PowerShell.exe. Um, if I'm not going to merge it with existing tools, then of course I want to do things like add up obfuscation, encryption, uh, synchronization, all that other good stuff. So that's, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Here's our website, uh, Twitter handle. Here are the repos right here. So you can just go on github.com, full metal cache, you have both power line and power stripper, two separate repos you can download. If you don't want to uh, deal with compiling these things right now, uh, I do have the binaries available on the repos as well, so you can go out, you can download the binaries if you just start playing around with it. I think I have this 64-bit uh, and the 32-bit version for power line up there. For power stripper, I think it's just a 64-bit version. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, any questions? You guys have any questions for me? Feedback? It's getting getting late. <laughs> so the question was: Is there a baseline version of PowerShell scripts that they should be looking at in terms of versions? Uh, versions uh, 2.0, 3.0. Right now, this is set up to run with version 2.0. Uh, with just a little bit of extra work, you could target uh, version um, higher versions, version 3.0. I think in the repo right now, I have it set up so that it's um, so that it, it, whatever version you want to use, it should automatically uh, embed that DLL, so that version of System Management Automation DLL, using uh, what is it, Fodi Kostura, the the Fodi Kostura plugin for Visual Studio. So it'll actually grab whatever version of DLL you want to use. It will embed that, and if you go to assist, I haven't actually tried it yet. So I'm not going to make any promises, but if you go to a system that doesn't have that version of PowerShell installed, it should still work because it'll carry around that DLL with you. Haven't tested it yet, but it should work. Excellent question. Any other questions? Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Definitely appreciate everyone coming.